Good morning, people watching Miss 65. Lisa Boyce, I'm going to give you the gospel. It's in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that Christ spilled his blood for our past, present, and future sins, was buried, and rose again on the third day, according to scripture. That's how we're saved. That's how we're kept saved. There is no other way to be saved except by the blood of Jesus. It is strictly the blood. Romans says that we are justified by the blood of Jesus. It is grace through faith in Christ alone. Not of ourselves, not of works, least any man should boast. People want to use the book of James. Well, if you read the very first verse in the book of James, you'll figure out who is talking to. The twelve tribes scattered abroad. This is why you learn dispensations, because you learn how to rightly divide the word of God. The whole Bible is for us, but the whole Bible is not to us or about us. Period. It is grace through faith in Christ alone, not of ourselves, not of works. We're never saved by works. We're saved for works, but we're not kept saved for works. If you stop doing works and you're saved, you're still saved. Period. It is grace that God gave his only begotten son and whosoever believe in him will not perish but have eternal life. The key word is believe. Once you accept Christ as Savior, you believe. And once you accept Christ as Savior, the Holy Spirit indwells in you. The moment you accept Christ as Savior, the second you accept Christ as Savior, the Holy Spirit indwells in you, the Holy Spirit guides you, the Holy Spirit keeps you, the Holy Spirit is your BFF, your best friend forever. Not only are you saved and rapture ready, but the Holy Spirit seals you until the day of redemption which means you will not lose your salvation, period. Now, I will stick to that gospel until I'm raptured or until my last breath, whichever comes first. That's the gospel in which you're saved. Now, I got to give you this article. This came out last night, and this is... The, you know what? <laughs> I can't tell you, and I'm going to do another video on uh, Gab. Um... People are saying that, the, uh, that they say that the connection is slow or whatever. I have no idea what internet you have. I have no idea, but I had no problems with it. My husband even checked it out, the Gap video that I did on his phone, and he said it went through fine. There was nothing wrong with it. So um, I have an easier time with that than Rumble. I'm just saying. I don't know what, like I said, I don't know what internet connection you guys have. I don't know what's going on, but it works fine. Maybe you could check your settings or whatever. I don't know. But this just came out, and um, as I said yesterday, California is going through something right now, and it's part of judgment. I'm just going to come out and say it. New California law for farms could cut off nearly all of the state's pork supply. A new California law for farms cut, could cut off all of the state's pork, uh, pork supply, which would create a bacon shortage in the state and drive up prices substantially, according to a report from The Blaze. In November 2018, California voters overwhelmingly approved California Proportion 12. See what I mean? A lot of this, and I'm, I'm not knocking all, and get me, listen very carefully. I am not knocking all of the Christians, born, truly born again believers in uh, California, who have no choice right now but to endure what they're going through. But a lot of these people, vote the same people in office over and over and over again. Let me explain something. That's the definition of insanity. 
you're doing something over and over again thinking that you're going to get the same different results, that's what California is doing. You got this governor over there, nuisance. I don't care what his real name is. I call him nuisance. Who's Please, don't get me started with him. In November 2018, California voters overwhelmingly approved the California Proportion 12. The Farm Animal <clears throat> Confinement Initiative. The bill is aimed at more humane treatment of farm animals, which would, listen to this, establish minimum space requirements based on square feet for calves raised for veal, breeding pigs and egg-laying hens, and ban the sale of veal from calves, pork from breeding pigs, and eggs from hens when the animals are confined to areas below minimum square feet requirements, according to Bala, uh, Balapedia, Balapedia. Starting on January 1st of 2022, approximately, what, August, September? What, five months from now? The second deadline of the law goes into effect, which requires egg-laying hens to be housed cage-free and breeding pigs raised with 24 square feet per pig, which would mean expanding animals' pens to about four feet by six feet. One number, one seller is bacon, eggs, and hash browns, said Kim, who for 15 years has run Sam's American, excuse me, eatery on the city's busiest uh, Market Street. You know what this is going to do? Your little restaurants are going to go out of business. That's what's going to happen. It says it could be devastating for us. At the beginning of next year, California will begin enforcing all an animal welfare proposition approved overwhelmingly by voters. Overwhelmingly by voters in 2018 that requires more space for breeding pigs, egg laying hens, chickens, and veal calves. Now, I'm going to tell you this. I know a lot of people probably don't like meat. That's your business if you don't. That's between you and whoever. But this is going to hurt the farmers and the meat farmers. This is going to probably put them out of business. This is bad on every level. And it's going to trickle down to the entire nation eventually. Now, what they're pushing is for all people to become non-meat eaters. If you can't see this, I don't know what to tell you. That's what they're pushing. They're pushing people away from meat. And you could see it in the commercials on TV. They have, uh, what, not, uh, incognito. They have all these meatless dishes that are coming out. And they're trying to push people to become total vegetarians. That's not going to happen with me. I don't know about you. And if you're a vegetarian, I'm not knocking you. That's between you and whatever. I don't care. But I will not call what God has called common, uncommon. I will continue to eat meat, regardless of what people say. And I hope you do the same thing. It says, it will be devastating for us. At the beginning of next year, California will begin enforcing an animal welfare proposition approved by the voters. It says, unless the courts intervene or the state temporarily allows non-compliant meat to be sold in the state, California will lose almost all of its pork supply, much of which comes from Iowa, and pork producers will face higher costs to regain a key market. 
Animal welfare organizations for years have been pushing for more humane treatment of farm animals. But the California rules could be a rare case of consumers clearly paying a price for their beliefs. KQED stated that if half the pork supply was suddenly lost in California, bacon prices would jump 60%, meaning a $6 package would rise to about $9.60, according to a study um, by the um, Hotamea Group, a consulting firm hired by opponents of the state proposition. At one typical hog farm in Iowa, the hogs are kept in open-air crates measuring 14 f uh, square feet when they join a herd and then for a week as part of the uh, insemination process before moving to a larger roughly 20 uh, square foot group pens and other hogs. You know what? These farmers are going to suffer. And I have, I have my highest respect for farmers. Highest respect for farmers. Both are less than 24 square feet required by California law to give breeding pigs enough room to turn around and to extend their limbs. Other operations keep uh, pigs in the uh, crates nearly all of the time. Thus also wouldn't be compliant. So basically, um, the California Department of uh, Food and Agriculture said, although the detailed regulations aren't finished, the key rules about space have been known for years. It is important to note that the law itself cannot be changed by regulations and the law has been in place since the farm animal confinement proposition passed. They're just going to crack down on it now because they're trying to get people away from meat is what they're trying to do. So basically what they're trying to do is put farmers out of business. That's the bottom line. They're going to put farmers out, especially on the West Coast in the Midwest, the farmers are going to suffer the most because of this. This is sick. I'm sorry, but it is. And then we wonder, well, geez, why is, why is California going through that? Well, there you go. That and other things that California is proposing. I'm not knocking California. I live there. I've lived there for a number of years and it sucks. I'm just telling you the truth. It's like the gospel and everything that God represents is smothered and overran by Satan. I told you, when I go to each state, and I've been to several, you can feel a different spirit in each state, and California has its own. So does Utah. You can feel that spirit going right into Utah, right in the line, the state line. And if you have discernment, you can feel it. And it's not good. Not at all. Folks, things are going to get worse. And like I keep saying, and like I told people before, no, we're not in the tribulation. And if you believe that, then you don't trust God. I'm just saying. I didn't mean to shock you, but it's the truth. I didn't come here to make you feel good. I came here to tell you the truth. We're not in the tribulation. Nor will the church ever see the tribulation. The church will be raptured before the great tribulation. You can take that to the bank. That's a promise. God said that we are not subject to his wrath. And if you continue to believe that we are in the tribulation or that we're going to go through the tribulation, I would talk to the Lord and I would have a long talk with him and ask him to show you the truth because the truth is in his word. You need to trust him more. You're seeing a glimpse of what's happening. And in some cases, we're probably going to taste a little bit of it. But we're not going to go through it. He will pull the church out. We are on the very cusp of the rapture. Like I say all the time. And what we're seeing is what's going to happen and what's going to get worse. This is a picnic compared to what's coming in the tribulation. And like I said before, 
you choose to be here and not get saved, that's your choice. I can only give you the truth of the gospel. I will be back with the next video and I will probably do one on Gap because I have some information that I can put on there, that I will put on there. In the meantime, I thank you for your support and I will let you know that I still pray for you guys every day. I will be back with the next video. Thank you.